What is happening dudes? This is Trent and uh, today I want to talk to you about some Photoshop trickery, some Photoshop cheats. I'm going to try to keep this very these uh, videos very concise uh, and focused. I haven't seen some of these things covered on YouTube so I wanted to cover them for you. Uh, this might be a little bit more of an advanced technique if you are interested in more beginner tutorials uh, uh, similar to this, uh, go back and check out the rest of the videos on my channel or check out my Gumroad videos. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is improving the quality of a scanned uh, sketch that you might have. So say that you've cooked up this drawing on paper and uh, you can even see my my uh, actual pa paper uh, where I pulled it off from the paper. This would be neat actually to copy and then put into other images if you wanted to keep it. But in this instance, we want to uh, get rid of it. There are a number of ways that we can get rid of it. One is, of course, we can just use the stamp tool. And then whatever I select, you hold down Option, whatever you select will be its source. And then you go in and uh, paint it in to uh, that area that you want to replace. And if I were to choose the eyeball, for instance, it'll duplicate whatever's over there here. That's the stamper. I don't see a lot of people using the stamper. Um, the second thing that we want to do is we want to improve the overall quality of this, the, the, the line art itself. If we were to zoom in on this, you would start to see there's a lot of uh, pixely lines. You can see, you can really see where um, my, there's the pencil scribblings. And uh, one of the things also, if you sketch this actually using a hard brush of some kind, your lines are going to look very rigid, you know. And um, what, that, what I mean is like the, it, too digital looks too fake, you know what I mean? So uh, one of the things that you're going to get if you draw on paper is everything's going to be kind of blurry a little bit. So what we're going to do is select everything, uh, copy it, that's Command C or Control C and then paste it, that's Command or Control V. Command V or Control V, depending if you're on a Mac or Windows. Uh, Command always replaces the Control key on a Mac. Anyway, so now if you look in, over in your layer stack over here, you'll notice we've got an exact duplicate. If we make it invisible, it doesn't really matter because it's the same as what's underneath it. And we're going to set this top layer to darken. And uh, once we've set it to darken, it's going to multiply anything that's on this top layer with the layer below it. So, you know, you could, if you wanted to, you could use this as a shading layer or something like that. And then when you undo it, it or when you make it invisible, you won't see it anymore. But that's not what we're going to do. We're actually going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And what this does is it actually, it keeps the underlying uh, line art beneath it. But then it, because it's set to darken, it'll actually create this softer edge around it. And this is actually a much more natural look. It softens out all of your line art. It also gives it a little bit of a darker look. You could also set this to multiply, which would make it a lot darker. But then you, you get a lot more of that papery texture. And if that's what you want, that's great. Uh, but uh, I personally kind of like to do it this way so that I get just a little bit of a subtle blur on it. This is a very subtle thing, but I can tell you it improves the, the way that your sketches will look when people view it online, just from a subconscious standpoint. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more, we're going to add a little bit more depth to our uh, sketch just to turn the forms very ever so slightly. So first thing we want to do is create a new layer. Uh, you're going to set it to uh, multiply. And you are going to, depending on how clean your artwork is, you could uh, go uh, select your bottom layer, hit Command L for levels, and uh, play around with this to get a cleaner line, a cleaner uh, background. Uh, so that a lot of you'll notice that if I go back in the history, a lot of that, uh, a lot of that line art's a lot more crisp now. Uh, a little bit more defined and our line art is looking darker um, we can copy everything paste it and then hit set that to multiply which will darken that out even more but maybe not that much so back it off so we've got a nice crisp line art happening right now uh, then what we could do is make a selection 
of our negative space outside of our character. And it's not going to be precise because we had some, some areas uh, where we did not, uh, it's not super crisp. Um, and because that's because it was scanned and that's okay. So uh, from there, we go back to our multiply layer and uh, we're just going to fill this with the foreground color, which is set to black right now, but we're gonna adjust that. And you can see what I mean, it's uh, over here. It'll use the foreground color. This is the background, this is the foreground color. But actually that's not what we want. What we want is to have the character filled in black and the outside uh, to remain white. And you'll see why we do all this. It's really just to separate our character from our background a little bit more. And this will help improve the presentation of just about every sketch. So make sure that you're on your multiply layer so we want to invert the selection, um, select inverts, inverse, uh, and that'll, that'll select everything that is the opposite of what is selected now. So now we were filling in the outside and now we want to fill in the inside. And then we go to uh, edit, fill, and then we're going to select our foreground color, which is black and that'll fill in her, her silhouette. But now she's like pitch black. And that's a cool silhouette and everything, um, but that's not what we wanted. What we want is actually to back that off dramatically. So I'm gonna drop that down to uh, about 20% opacity. And uh, then I'm gonna go in, go ahead and uh, because this is black, I'm gonna uh, go in and actually like fill in these little gaps. Now, I, if I color selected, that's not going to be the, the right color. That's going to actually select what's visible there. It's already blended. It's already mixed the layers uh, using the color dabber. So we want to actually do what the layer is if it were at 100%. So we want to fill it with black. Anywhere close to 20% there is going to give us the look that we want. And uh, because it's set to multiply, it's, it's just going to compound on what's underneath it. Uh, from there... We don't want to get into actually drawing this right now. So from there, uh, let's uh, apply the blur effect that we talked about previously. So we select everything and then we paste it and then we set that to darken. And then we go to blur, Gaussian blur. And there you go. We've got ourselves a really nice, a very clean version of what we started with. Just real quick, I'm going to tidy up just a little bit here um, and uh, <laughs> so uh, the next thing that we want to do that's going to really help improve our presentation of our sketches is a color balance layer so I'm gonna go or not a color balance layer first we're gonna start out with a gradient map and uh, I have some some gradient maps that I've already uh, created that I use um, and you can, of course, if you, if you have my uh, box set of tutorials, it also comes with all of my gradient maps. You can also just get that from my brushes pack. Uh, but uh, I have a good number of different uh, uh, gradient maps. And, and how this works, let me undo it and then walk you through it. Um, but real quick, I'll show you how cool. Like some of these things can look pretty damn cool. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones for sketches. And then uh, if you zoom out, nice. So what it does is uh, it, it maps uh, if anything that's really dark, if it's black, it's going to be in this range. If it's white, it's going to be at the very end. And if it's just slightly gray, it's going to end up right here. So uh, how that applies is if I uh, were to draw something lighter underneath, it doesn't just use color. You'll notice I'm using white, but because it's just lightening it, it, uh, it falls now into the range of here within that, that gradient map. And I've done some other tutorials on gradient maps before, but it's really the best way to get uh, color into your images very quickly. I do this with every line art that I do if I start out an image in black and white. So um, let me walk you through it. Uh, this, is the, this is what we had. This is where we were uh, previously. Uh, we had applied our subtle gray to our sketch and then we applied a little bit of a blur to it and uh, this is where all that comes in handy now we go down here to this uh, this uh, this is basically going to be a bunch of just shortcuts for effects that you can do new layer effects 
You can do a levels layer. Uh, before we had done it actually on the layer, but this would create a new layer, as you can see. It creates a new layer with a mask, which you can actually paint out, and I'll show you a little bit of how to do that later. But right now we want to get rid of this, so we want to uh, delete it. And uh, right now what we want to focus on is the gradient map. So when we select it, it's going to use... It starts out by creating a new gradient map. Don't worry, don't freak out, dudes. I'm here, I'm with you. I know that it's scary. Like, what happened to my image? It's completely gone now, dude. It's just on another layer, see? And that layer has a mask that covers the whole image. Um, if it's white, it's going to affect what's there. If it's black, it's not. Uh, and this is actually our gradients. Now, you're probably going to have some pretty derpy looking automatic gradients that Photoshop comes with. I'm sorry, you, they're just not pretty gradients. That It doesn't come with pretty gradients. Um, if you have my, my gradients, my brush pack, then if you've installed all of my gradients, then you're going to have something that looks more similar to what I've got here. And you can just select any one of these and just try out some really cool different effects. This works very good on uh, images that are grayscale. And you've seen me use this trick a lot, uh, but I've never really broken down how I do it. This one seems to be the best one for this image because of the, the range that it falls in. So I'm going to just select it. Now what's neat about this is that it's its its own layer, it's its own thing. So it, I can back it off a little bit if I wanted to, uh, or I could set this to multiply if I wanted to dark, really like darken it. I could use my other layer effects if I wanted to, to uh, enhance this. And, and that'll actually work uh, if you wanted to do another one on top of it. Let's say that I wanted uh, to compound my gradient maps. I have no idea how this is, if this is going to look good or how it's going to work, uh, this particular one. So let's say I want to just affect it with a little bit of an overlay, and then I want to go into the mask on this, and this is where it's, it gets crazy. You're going to get crazy with it and erase out um, just half of my mask to have the lower mask underneath and the upper mask on top. And now I can even change that out. So see how this is like blue, bluish, and it's got, it's just affecting this area right here. And I've erased out in the mask, I've erased out so that that blue mask is going to hit that even more. And I, I kind of like the idea that maybe this one's gonna multiply just a little bit. And yeah, yeah, that's nice. It's okay, it's okay, but let's go back to what it was. Um, this is also a great way to colorize your line art, just in general. Um, then another thing that we wanna do is because of the range. Now, I already know that this is, I've, I've spent some time with this, and the more you, time you spend with it, the more you're going to kind of get this down. But I already know that if I select all of this, and I hit Command L. No, actually, let's not do that. Let's since we're playing with layer effects, let's do it here. We're gonna hit layers, and we're gonna make this darker. And it's going to hit it with just a little bit of that green. And it adds just ever so slightly this range. And I'll show you what's happening and why that why that's colorized and not just gray is because we have a gradient map here, excluding this gradient map. So this gradient map just compounds, it adds a, a, a gradient map on top of what was already there to get this effect. And I kind of like how our lines are uh, looking, but let's darken it up just a little bit more. Let's copy this. Uh, this is our original line art, and we're going to put it under our gradient maps, and we're going to just multiply that just a little bit more and then back it off. So you'll see the difference. Do you see how our lines are just a little bit stronger here? So, uh, but I really want that color in the line. So I'm going to just uh, play around with the, the opacity up here. This is gonna adjust the opacity of whatever is on that layer and its effect. So from there, sometimes I will quite literally just go in and uh, start to, I would create a new layer so that I want to be affected by these gradient maps and this effect that I have over top, this 
kind of bluish effect that I have. Uh, I would go in here and set this to normal. Uh, make sure that you have nothing selected. Make sure that you're on the pencil and not the eraser. I was just on the eraser. I was like, why is that doing that? See, sometimes even I get tripped up. It's a lot to keep track of. And this is why initially I was saying this might be a little bit like too advanced um, because it, it just got real. <laughs> I don't know. It's not, it's not real. This is not real. Um, what is real? Let's talk about that. No, we don't need to talk about that. So uh, this is a layer where you could go in and um, you can make selections. Since I have all of everything selected, I could just uh, use a um, airbrush. Now that I'm on this, this layer that I had, I had just created, uh, and I want to set that to multiply. Now I can go in and start to really have some fun getting, like this is all going to get affected by that uh, gradient the gradient maps that I have uh, associated with this. So you're going to get a lot more blues and let's really work up our, our um, fade from down here yeah. and erase out because we're, I feel like it's getting too strong now. It's just a little bit too strong. So uh, one of the last things you can do, you can even go into curves up. Uh, if you go above everything and you create a new curves layer, you could even begin to affect your overall compounded on everything curves. And just if you wanted to like back it all off ever so slightly, but keep some of that, that yellow and uh, for where our, our edges are fading. And I mean, this is, this is a tremendous time for you to go in and you could even start adding like just subtle uh, like uh, color dab and then do like a hard edge thing here and uh, just add some like speculars. To your sketches, uh, these are not necessary. Uh, this is like a, you know, you could start to clean it up just a little bit if you wanted to. Like I've, I've actually just color dabbed whatever my compounded colors are. I, I kind of like these little rim edges of of uh, yellow that have that have kind of uh, come up, you can kind of still see where her nipple used to be. So let's just clean that up because uh, we want to keep this PG-13 even though it's in the video. Don't worry, nobody will know you saw the nips. <laughs> you saw Trent draw some nips on the YouTubes. Don't tell your parents. Anyways, uh, all right, dudes. You know what? For now, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. I think this is uh, this is the the this is where I want to kind of cap it. I could just keep going. I could just keep going with this, just color dabbing and darkening in some certain lines, and then uh, lightening out other things. Um, you know, just don't don't just post your sketches anymore, dudes. This took me. I mean, truthfully, it could take you about ten minutes to do this to any just scanned sketch. So stop just posting your black and white grayscale sketches. Put some gradient map effects on there, and uh, and and post like a rock star on those uh, on those forums. <laughs> you don't you don't need to be just posting little grayscale uh, sketches. And uh, this is especially helpful if you're coming from a comic book background like I did. Um, and see, another thing is you don't need to go to art school. You got me, bro. Just uh, subscribe. I'll be there for you. I'll be there to look over your shoulder. That's terrible. Okay, that's it for me. If you're interested in learning a lot more of the techniques and tricks that I use to cheat at Photoshop, uh, then, and I'll, I, it shaves my time in half. The amount of time that I spend on a painting and a drawing is uh, substantially less than a lot of the people that, that I know that do this. So. Uh, if you want to pick up those techniques and really speed yourself up, go over to Gumroad. Uh, the link is in the section below the video. And uh, until next one, I will catch y'all manyanda bond. And remember to draw with passion. Oh, yeah.